Good morning. My name is Cami Evans. I am a spiritual practitioner intern here at the Columbus Center for Spiritual Living. And it is my pleasure to do this morning's meditation. I invite you Come to get in. comfortable in your chair. Feet on the ground. Or since we're all safe at home, maybe you are laying down or sitting on the ground. Whatever, it all works. Now let's take some deep cleansing breaths as we close our eyes and allow ourselves to get centered. Take the time to go within with a curiosity and a wonder. No judgment, no shame, just a deep curiosity. Begin by noticing sensations at the crown of your head. Does it feel tight, relaxed? Is it warm, cool? Is it constricted, open? Notice the space between your eyebrows and your jaw, the darkness of your throat. Notice your shoulders, your shoulder blades, the length of your spine. Notice your chest, what feels constricted, 
what feels open. Just collecting information. Down to the belly. Where is your breath? Down to the pelvic floor. Just noticing. What sensations do you feel? Sweeping down your right arm, almost like a feather. Just noticing what you feel. In your arm, in your hand, the palm. Sweeping down the left side, from your arm to your wrist. To your hand, to your palm. Noticing temperatures. Tingling weight. Now notice the weight of your body on the chair or on the pillow, or on the bed. Now down your right leg, the calf, your foot, or your foot might be touching the earth. Now down the other side, all the way down. Take a deep breath. Remembering the information you have collected. Notice where you feel the most constricted. Maybe your throat. Your belly. If you could name the emotions you're feeling, what would you name them? Place your hand on your heart and say to the emotions, I see you, I honor you. What do you wish to tell me? Be brave. Feel this emotion without suppressing, judging it, or denying it. Now imagine roots. Roots going down to the bottom of your feet and to the earth. Imagine those roots going down, down into the earth. I feel my roots going down, down into the earth. And I imagine your roots seeking mine. Do you feel them down to the earth tangled up in each other? Across the city from our homes, we're holding each other up like a forest of trees. Our distance is only imaginary. We are deeply, deeply connected. So are our emotions, and so is the strength that we can give each other. I imagine you taking from the roots, 
from me, from each other. Anything that you need, take strength, take energy, take comfort. Let it go up through those roots into the body. Let it flow from the body up, through your feet, to those places that feel constricted. Breathe. Let it come. Let it go. If there's anything that you want to offer me or any of the godlings gathered in this community throughout our city, send that energy flow down through your roots. We are nourishing each other. Let's just rest there for a moment. Sending. Receiving. Connected. Thank you.
And when you're ready, I invite you to take as much energy, as much wisdom as you can from our roots. Let the energy become clearer, more vivid, stronger. What has this energy came to tell you? Listen. Get quiet. And hear what that wisdom wants to tell you. What it wants you to hear. These roots that connect us are always available to you to guide you, to love you, to mother you. Now take one final breath. When you feel comfortable, slowly open your eyes, wiggle your toes and fingers, bring yourself back into the place, the space where you started. Know that you are loved, know that you are supported. And know that you know that you know that we are connected. Namaste.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Columbus Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Kristen Peers, and I am a Columbus Center for Spiritual Living Religious Science Practitioner. And it is my pleasure today to give the announcement. All right. Uh, happy Easter, everyone. Um, and as you know, uh, as you know, we are on Zoom today. We are not on live stream, and that will continue uh, until we say it's different. Uh, announcements. So Reverend Gregory Toole will be facilitating a class, Conscious Loving, based on the book, Conscious Loving. This will be for six Saturdays, April 18th, May 2nd, and 16th, June 6th and 20th, and July when we announce. It'll be in July that will be announced from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. All classes will be recorded, so you don't have to miss anything. Uh, the class will be offered through Zoom and through Love Offering. So really, there's no excuse not to take it. Uh, 
there is a required book for this class and you do need to sign up. So contact Robin at Robin at Center for Spiritual Living org to get signed up for this class. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can see on the screen Robin's email. Second announcement, our 2020 annual meeting uh, has been canceled until further notice. We will let you know when it's uh, time to come to that meeting. Coming soon, the Roots class. Roots class will be on Zoom. Please contact uh, Amy Papadopoulou, and she's the one who will be teaching that. Dates and times are being determined. We just received word that the 2020 Columbus Pride Festival that was scheduled for June 19th has been uh, rescheduled. And so that will now be Saturday, October 3rd. The parade uh, will take Will, play, will take place on October 3rd. Uh, more details to follow. Uh, having a festival at all this year has not been determined as of right now. All right, so that is the news from today. Let's all sing our opening song. Easter and welcome to the Columbus Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Reverend Amy Papadupolo and it is my honor and my pleasure to be here with all of you this morning. Thank you for joining us on Zoom today. Um, we will be recording this service and then we will be putting it on our Facebook page as well as our new YouTube channel at Columbus CSL. So next, would you please say our sacred covenant with me? And as you know, we have shortened this. Thanks, Robin. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. And knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all of its blessed expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to express God, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wholeness. Uh, 
as I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they are revealed in a way that expresses God and serves the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful. God is gracious. And so it is. Thank you. I'd like to thank practitioner intern Tammy Evans for the beautiful meditation this morning. And I'd like to thank practitioner intern Ann Strayer for holding virtual High Watch for us. High Watch is a state of consciousness that allows us to deepen and expand in our accepting and embodying and being fully present in the moment. Now, I would like to reintroduce Kristen Pierce, who will be assisting me today. Thank you. And with the ringing of this bowl, we begin our service. You think you're being broken, but you're really being broken open. And that's where the healing happens in those broken places, if you allow it. Jane Fonda. Now let the music take us into the silence for a few moments.
grateful. I am so grateful knowing that I and each person here is a part of the one, the God, the universe, the goddess, that oneness, knowing that God is all there is, there can be nothing else. I am so grateful on this Easter day where the grass is growing, the flowers are blooming, and each person here is alive and breathing. I am grateful. Ah, I claim a perfect order today. I claim joy and celebration. I claim feeling the hugs, feeling the hugs through those roots. Mm. I am grateful, knowing that all is well and all is in perfect order in myself, in each person here and everywhere. I am grateful. I lift it up. I let it go. And so it is. Hang on, looks like we're having a little bit of a technical glitch. Just give us a second. <laughs> Robin, we don't hear your audio. So we're going to need to restart and share your computer audio. You'll have to turn your computer audio up. Do you want me to give it a shot? Yeah, why don't you do that?
Oh my God, that was so cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. How fun. Well, once again, happy Easter to everyone. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for being present, for being patient while we're, um, that the technology and how amazing to be able to put that technology together like that. Thank you. That was really fun. So it's so nice to see everyone that is here today on our Zoom um, and how good it is to be able to come together on one of the holiest celebrations um, that we have during the year, at least as the Christian tradition has during the year. And today, I am going to talk about Easter. I'm going to talk about Easter and the Easter story in the Gospels. I'm also going to talk about uh, the resurrection because that is what happened in the uh, Gospels today on the third day. And then, of course, I'll be talking about the pandemic um, and how we can view the pandemic through the lens of science of mind and what we can do to help ourselves and help our planet at this time. But first, I have a video that I'm going to share with you, and it is 
kids telling the Easter story. Let me share my screen. Once again, thank you for being patient. I have closed captions on here too, in case it's hard to hear. So this is kids telling the story of Easter. Tell me the story of Easter. Easter. Whoa. You got toys? What kind of toys? Lego! Jesus rose from the dead? What happened with Jesus on Easter? He made a bunny. He um, led some people somewhere. Who were his like main friends? Uh, his disciples? The bad guys killed him. The uh, Romans, I think it was. He got it, like pinned to a to a cross. He did this. Everybody was watching, and then um, and yeah. Then sooner or later, he died. What did he die of? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Drugs. Put into a cave. With a rock. He was in heaven um, working on his project. Then he, then he came down to see his bunny. What project was Jesus working on? A computer? <laughs> he made a promise that he will come back on Easter. It took three days to two angels to come and move a photo. And Jesus was alive. When Jesus came back, he gave people Easter eggs. He said, Bunny, please, please don't hide the Easter eggs. <laughs> what did the people say when Jesus came back? Um, they said, Jesus, please take care of us. Please don't kill us. What did Jesus do when he came back to life? <laughs> So I absolutely love that last little boy when he danced around. <laughs> what did Jesus do when he came back to life and he danced around? So a little fun, a little fun this morning. So we're told in the Gospels um, that Jesus was crucified um, and was laid in a tomb and then resurrected three days later. And according to Joel Goldsmith, a modern American spiritual teacher and mystic, he says that Jesus never said he would be resurrected, but what he did say was, I am the resurrection. So let's think about that. Jesus never said he would be resurrected. He said, I am the resurrected. And that's the last part of this phrase that I really want to talk about and offer us today on this Easter is that I am the resurrection and each and every one of us. There's been a lot of conversation about this phrase, I am the resurrection, on the ministers listserv uh, this week. Ministers have been talking about how they've been taking the I am the resurrection into their daily meditation and contemplation and some very profound insights and deepening and, and some discomfort has come up from taking this into uh, their spiritual practice. So I'm going to encourage all of us this week to take this phrase, I am the resurrection, into your meditation, into your contemplation, into your spiritual practice, and see what comes up for you. I also invite you to meet uh, us on Zoom this Wednesday night for our community gathering. It's from seven to eight. And we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be doing some spiritual practice and we're gonna be talking about what comes up, what has come up for us when we talk about, uh, when we take this I am the resurrection into meditation, contemplation. So the term resurrection is about something that was dead 
and rises from that dead state into a new transformed state. It's a transmutation to a new level of consciousness. That's the metaphysical interpretation. It's about something that was dead that rises from that dead into a new transformed state, a transmutation into a new level of consciousness. Reminds me kind of the, the phoenix that dissolves into the ashes and comes back out of itself. The Easter moment that we see in the resurrection is different than the Easter story. The Easter story is about what happened to Jesus of Nazareth, but the Easter moment is about the realization, about the transformation and consciousness of the I am. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they talk about and they tell the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, the Gospels were written, uh, biblical scholars agree that they were, many biblical scholars agree that they were written between 66 and 110 CE. Before they were written down, they were passed along as oral traditions. There is a uh, minister down in Atlanta, David Alexander, who's quite prolific in our uh, movement, and he describes it like this. Most, many biblical scholars agree that most, nearly all, of Jesus's followers gave up on him as the Messiah was taken down from the cross because he had failed the messianic, the savior test that his followers believed that he was going to pass. He failed at least momentarily from their expectations because they expected that he would save them from the political and social corruption of the day. And in fact, he did fail the messianic and savior test because he did not take up a leader, a position of leadership and rule, and he did not fix the world. The messenger was defeated and they moved on. But what happens in the gospels is sometime later, many generations later, when the gospels were written down, they borrowed the writers of the Gospels, whether it be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or other people that added to those Gospels as well. They borrowed symbology from well-known Savior stories from other times and other places and applied them to Jesus. They did the same thing with the birth narrative. Biblical scholars also agree that the writers of the New Testament were familiar with the Old Testament. And when they wrote the stories of the New Testament, they wrote them in order to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament of the coming Messiah. Something that also happened in the first century of CE or our common era is the power of Jesus's message. Something happened when there was a moment of realization where, where his, his, the people that were writing the Gospels realized that the, that the message, that Jesus' message, the I am, the resurrection, is that each person has the power of divinity within them. And it suddenly occurred to them and they realized that this message is not dependent upon Jesus' physical presence, is that it is alive in their minds and in their hearts and right now. So again, the Easter moment, Jesus, the story of Jesus of Nazareth is different than the, the, the excuse me, the Easter story is different than the Easter moment, but it's embedded in the Easter story. It's not three days later, but decades later that the moment of consciousness occurs to them, occurs to the writer. And it can occur for us as well and does occur for us. 
when one realizes that the power of the eternal, God, the divine, the presence, is alive in us no matter what. That is when we realize I am the resurrection. It's that power of consciousness. It's the power of the eternal that's alive in us. That's when transformation is possible no matter what. And this can happen at any time. And it's not a, just a one and done. It can happen time after time after time. This also points to the eternality of our life and the eternality of our consciousness that according to Ernest Holmes, and Ernest Holmes points out that that can never be defeated. So again, that Easter moment, that resurrection moment is the moment in consciousness when you realize that the power of the eternal is alive in you. The power is in you, is in me, is in all of us. That is the I am resurrected moment. It's the power. And again, from David Alexander in Atlanta, he says, looking at the gospels through a scholarly lens, one can begin to see the emerging motive of the authors. It's as if they're writing the Easter narrative as a rebuttal, as a shared experience of the messianic defeat. That defeat appears to be the end of the story when he died on the cross, but then they say, hold on, what if he actually wins in a way that is better than all the other messianic legends and stories? According to Charles Fillmore, he and his wife Myrtle were the founders of unity. Charles Fillmore tells us, the resurrection is the lifting up of the whole man into the Christ consciousness, the whole spirit, soul, and body the resurrection lifts up the facilities of the mind until they conform to the absolute ideas of the divine mind. And this renewal of the mind makes a complete transformation of the body so that every function works in divine order and every cell becomes incorruptible and immortal. The resurrection is an organic change that takes first that takes place daily and all who are confirming their lives to this regeneration of truth. So how do we apply this to our lives? How do we apply this I am the resurrection, especially right now in the middle of the pandemic? So I'm sure we're all aware that it looks like that they're telling us that the curve is beginning to flatten out that we've been doing what we've been asked to do. We've stayed home if we're not essential workers. We've washed our hands. Now we cover our mouths when we go out. But I came across some statistics that, at least for me, I haven't been hearing in the news that I did want to hear from you, that I did want to share with you, because they were encouraging. Also, I want to remind you of the, the phrase, um, when you change what you look at, I'm sorry, let me say that again. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So according to Johns Hopkins University, worldwide, more than 400,000 patients have successfully recovered from the coronavirus. The Ohio Stadium holds about 105,000 people so the amount of people who have recovered, who have had coronavirus and recovered from it, would fill the stadiums almost four times. It's a lot of people. Also, according to Johns Hopkins University, worldwide, the death rate of those that get the coronavirus is fewer than 5% than those who have been infected. So talking about the coronavirus, According to uh, Reverend Dr. Tom Sanner, who's an Ernest Holmes and Thomas Troward scholar uh, with Centers for Spiritual Living, he said, a virus is also a vibration of living spirit. It's not an illusion. And it has a reality as an entity, as an aspect of livingness 
and it has a desire to express itself. The entire universe is alive with spiritual energy, which is everywhere present. And although we are seeing the material effects of this specific virus, there is a loving energy of spirit behind us, behind it, excuse me. There is a loving energy of spirit behind this virus. He goes on to say, he says, I don't know how the virus or this disease being caused by the virus is going to be eliminated. We do not know how we are being transformed and it's not our job to know. That's the job of the creative law of mind. Some people say we are on the planning committee, but not the ways and means committee. Science of Mind, a religious science, believes that science and spirituality are totally compatible. We are on the cutting edge of this science that declares that there is no contradiction between true science and true spirituality. And this new paradigm is one of spiritual inclusivity. So as we are the ones that are on the edge, as Reverend Molly used to say, the edge of the wedge, or the edge, that leading edge, as we believe and know that the science and spirituality can and do come together, as we're seeing this uh, curve flatten, as I was writing this talk, it occurred to me, maybe it's the time, maybe it's our time of like Jesus when that rock was beginning to be rolled away. That, that rock being rolled away, maybe the flattening of the curve is that, that it's the same kind of thing. So as we begin to think about re-emerging into this world, whenever that will be, after being quarantined, maybe like Jesus in the tomb, as he re-emerged, he was transformed. As we reemerge from our homes, are we going to trans, are we going to emerge being transformed? Remember, being resurrected is a moment in consciousness when one realizes the power of the eternal is alive in us and alive in, it, in our experiences. Being resurrected is the realizing that the power of God is within each and every one of us, that we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe, in a universe that is life-affirming, that is encompassing of everything and everyone. As a movement, as religious science, spiritual uh, science, centers for spiritual living, of new thought, we're a group of people, we're a very powerful group of people who believe in the power of oneness, the power of love and the power of God and the power of prayer. We're the ones on the leading edge and we're the ones that can make a difference in this pandemic and have been making a difference. So my question for you this morning on this Easter morning is, and for me as well, as we come out of our quarantine, as we begin to think about coming out of our quarantine, will we come out as resurrected? Are you willing to emerge with a deeper, more profound and embodied sense that the power of God is within you? That the power of God is within each and every one of us that we are powerful beings, that we are uniquely individualized essence of spirit. Are you willing to come out as a deepen, with a deepened sense that we truly are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe? And again, I invite you to come to our Zoom gathering this Wednesday night from seven to eight to discuss this. As you take this, I am resurrected into your daily spiritual practice. I also want to invite you to Reverend Gregory's class on conscious loving. As we begin to think about flattening the curve coming out um, and all of this information, it will come out in our um, 
Columbus Center for Spiritual Living newsletter that goes out about midweek. So in closing, I have a suggested prayer and I have a twofold call for action for all of us. The prayer goes like this. It's a prayer as a spiritual vaccine of love to the virus. And we know that it will work, a spiritual vaccine of love. And we know it will work because love is the most powerful energy in the world. Could we love this virus into a harmless state? We could pray to love this virus into a, harm, into a harmless state. And at the same time, we can pray to eliminate the planetary fear that we see. So my twofold call to action, actually, I guess it would be three, to pray the prayer of the spiritual vaccine of love for the virus and to eliminate planetary fear. And also to be ready, to be willing, to be available, to be resurrected, to be transformed from your own home tombs with a deeper realization and embodiment of the eternal power of God that is alive in you. And to pray the prayer of vaccine of love. So please join with me as I speak this prayer. And I'll start off with a reading by Ernest Holmes. If you can put aside your fear, doubt, and hurt, which is but an expression of your sense of isolation. If you can put aside all negation and turn to me alone, then you shall be made free. Be still and know that I am God, your true self. Be still and know that I am the life principle. Be still and know that I am the truth, dispelling all error. I am power, neutralizing all weakness. I am abundance, swallowing up all lack. I am your real self. I am resurrected. And from this place, I give great thanks. Great thanks for the deepening of the principles. Great thanks for the expansion of our consciousness. And great thanks for the vaccine of love for this coronavirus that causes the COVID-19. I speak a word of that, the vaccine of love right now, that this, this virus is rendered harmless through the act of love, that the planetary fear is alleviated with this vaccine of love. And I know that we are a powerful group of people as we take these prayers into our hearts, into our minds, and into our consciousness and know that this is the truth for the planet. This is the truth for each and every one of us as we come out resurrected into that place where God shows up and love and light and life and peace, power, prosperity and beauty and well-being. I claim this on behalf of each and every person on this Zoom meeting today and each and every person and each and every call and each and every person on the planet that love is power and love is the order of the day as we awaken to this truth of life. I am grateful for the technology. I'm grateful for each and every one of us. I am grateful that it is done in the mind of God and I release it. I let it go. And please say with me, and so it is. Okay. Just waiting a moment for the view to shift and then we can begin the song.
Do we have Robin or Amy? Can we shift to the speaker view so that people can see me, see my head, <laughs> my big dome? I think if people put it on speaker view, they could see you. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead <laughs> and work with this. I see it now, it has begun. After the long night, I welcome the sun. See the new through ancient times. Over and over again. Perfect. Thank you, Carissa. Oh my gosh. We didn't even plan that, did we? <laughs> that was perfect. <sighs> oh. So now is the time for the giving of our gifts. And during this unique time, whether you connect with us on your phone, on your tablet, your TV, your computer, via Zoom or Facebook Live, Oh, we're not doing Facebook Live, excuse me. We are honored to be able to continue to minister to you and to support you spiritually. Although we might not be passing an offering basket in person, we please remember and please know that you have all been so very generous and continue to be generous. And that's how we will make a world that works for everyone. We are here to support you and we are here to serve you. And if there's anything you need, please let us know. There are several ways that you can continue to give your gifts and your donations and your tithes to the Columbus Center for Spiritual Living. And I think it's coming up on our seat screen. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Text to give, go to our website and do PayPal. You can also mail your donations in or you can set up uh, an automatic payment and um, Robin can help you do that or I can help you do that too. So I know I give through PayPal, so I can't take my gift, but what I can do is I can take my hands that 
make, make my gift through PayPal and I can take my hands and I can put them on my heart. And as I do this today, I know I want to invite all of us to just really bring into our consciousness those people in our country that have lost their jobs, those people in our country who might be struggling, those the um, food banks that are struggling to have enough food, just take a moment and go to that place within yourself where you know that you know that you know that God is the source of all and there's abundance for everyone. There's enough for everyone. And from it's, this pl it's from this place of knowing, please say our affirmation. My gift goes forth to heal and bless and prosper. It does its good and perfect work and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. All right, let's let it wash over us. so grateful for the abundance of gifts that are, have been given, are being given, and will be given. I am grateful for the words, the songs, the sounds, the money, the resources that allow us all to feel fed and keep on going. I am grateful because I know all of this is a part of the one and there is abundance there is always abundance and I am a part of that. And each person here is a part of that abundance. Ah, my heart sings and my body dances and I am grateful. I am grateful. And so together we sing. And so it is and so we let it be. And so it is, and so we let it be. Thank you. So let's thank Carissa Holmes. You can either do this or do this, either one. Uh, our CSL virtual choir, Carissa Holmes, Ayla Kojoma, Ralph Leesberg, Laura Adair, Michelle Chambers, Tony Bernardi on piano, Steve Paracas on bass, Joe Nelson on drums, who have collaborated their musical talents to provide the music today. And thank you to all of you who are here on the Zoom celebration today. 
if, it, if you're comfortable with it, can you please um, stop your video so we can see, we can all see each other's beautiful faces as I read, um, as I just say the last little parts of our service. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We would love to send you a um, welcome packet in the mail if we could. We would uh, tape a, a Clorox wipe on the outside, but I don't think we could. Uh, if you'd like to receive one, please send a private chat to Robin Brookhouse right now with your name and your address and phone number, and she would be happy to send you one. If you would like to be added to our weekly email, um, if you don't get it, please also send Robin um, your email address and she will put you on there. And then lastly, if you would like a prayer on this beautiful Easter morning, please stay on after service today. And there are, there are practitioners that are here and I'll put you into breakout rooms. It'll be just you and a practitioner. Prayers for anything, joy, abundance, sadness, grief, whatever it is. Our practitioners love to pray and they are professionally licensed prayer professionals. That's what we like to call them. So if everyone could please take a moment unmute your mic we're going to say our affirmation with us i think usually we put it up on the screen but i don't really think we need to because we all know it <laughs> are we good okay push that button there we go here we go ready, yeah. ready. there is mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. light. That life, God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. And so it is. So it is. Thank you. All right. Let's let's get happy. <laughs> it might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Yeah, sunshine, she's here. You can take a break. and say 